810,697 words, 3,566,480 letters if you got the right Bible. I've even heard preachers say, well, it don't matter how many chapters of the Bible you read. And what they're saying that because they feel guilty for not doing it yourself. And there is a little bit of truth in that. There is a little bit of truth. You don't just read it vainly without paying attention. You just, but your flesh is so rebellious and so wicked that if you don't discipline it and make it do something, you ain't going to do it long and not very much. You know, well, the only time I do it, if I don't mean it, ain't. That's like somebody saying, well, there ain't no use in praying if your heart ain't in it. Yeah, there is too. You pray when your heart ain't in it, but after a while your heart will get in it. It's just like everything else. Uh, so uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm not doing that to make you feel bad. I'm doing that to push you. My job is to push you toward God. And I push you and I push you and I push you toward the Lord. And uh, that, that's my ministry part of it. Philippians chapter 3 and verse number 13. As we look at this old year, just quickly, very quickly this morning, verse 13. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press, I press. See, Father, it don't just happen naturally. You push, press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I want to preach just a minute on push, putting uh, how, to, how to face, how to push in 2024. Press toward the mark in 2024. And I'm not going to go into a long thing and I'm not going to preach like I normally do. I'd just like to say as we end this year that God has been good to us one more time. God has been good to us. If you're here sitting here this morning and you're breathing, and you're in your right mind, and you have food in your belly, and your family's here, and your name's in the book of life, and you're sitting here this morning, you got to get up. Buddy, God's been good to you. You are way ahead of most people in this world. God's been good to us. Listen, the Bible said rejoice because your name's in that book, y'all. We ought to shout because our name is up yonder in God's book. And the Lord has not done us wrong. God has been good to us. God's been good to us. I look back over this year and I, I actually thought about starting in January and talking about every month and how the Lord blessed us through the cold months and in the spring. The youth rally was tremendous. Camp this year and then the camp meeting and now winter camp. And as we end this year, the Lord has been good to us. If you've got food on your table and you've got clothes on your back, the Lord has been good to you. And I'd like to just, uh, say just a couple of things this morning, and then we'll go and we'll deal with more about some more serious things tonight. Here's my advice for you as we enter in to 2024. First of all, uh, let me say this. Don't worry at all today about yesterday. Amen? Paul said, I forget what's done. People, 2023 is in the books. It's gone. We can't do nothing about it. You can't change it. You can't go back and undo something. You can't go back and redo something. Everything we've done is in the books. 2023 is past. All of us failed. I wish I'd have done some things better. I'm glad I did get some things done right. I, I wish I'd have never done nothing wrong. But either way you look at it, the year is gone. And I'm not going to sit around all this coming year and think, well, I wish I'd have done this and I wish I'd have done that. You ain't going to get nowhere just whining about your failures of yesterday or the fears of tomorrow. You ought to just make up your mind, by the grace of God, I'm going to do better in this coming year. Amen? That's right, brother. Life is tough. I go, oh, Candace Owen told them the other day, uh, some liberal left wing LGBT, something or another, uh, stood up and said, uh, uh, she said, uh, don't you know your presence on this? That, that bothers some of us. What do you say to that? She said, life's tough, trying to get a helmet. And, and uh, that's true. That's true. Life's tough. Life's tough. You're going to get hit no matter what you do. You're going to get hit if you do right. You're going to get hit if you do wrong. You might as well just toughen up uh, and stiffen up that uh, upper lip there a little bit and say, 
by the grace of God, we're in the war. Uh, but I'm glad we've got instructions from the captain. I'm glad we've got a light from Pete and a lamp to our path. And just press on, brother, in 2024. I'm going to tell you something this morning. You're looking at old brother Danny, same old brother Danny I've always been. If you're waiting on me to change uh, what I believe and what this book teaches, uh, you'll have to give me a pill, give me dementia. Uh, I, I'll tell you something brother, this thing ain't going to change we believe the same thing as we did this time last year and the year before and the year before and the year before how that Christ died for our sins according to the scripture that he was buried that he rose the third day according to the scripture that he went back to heaven sitting up yonder making intercession for us and he's coming back one day to take us home to be with him we're going to live with him forever and ever and ever there's still a heaven, there's still a hell will forget last year and press on this year preaching the same thing. See, I'm, I'm glad we're not like scientists. We're much more scientific than scientists. They change their belief every few years. It used to be ten, so many million years old. Then it was a billion years old. Now it's th and it was 3.4 billion years. Now they say it was four, uh, 13 billion years ago. And the reason is because they can't explain everything. I like what that one preacher said, the old fence from Auburn, Lenore, the old, old country preacher. I let him preach five minutes the other day, and he got up and he said, there's a God, there's a God, there's a God. How we know there's a God? And that, that was a quote of the week in my book, brother. Uh, he said, uh, he was preaching away, he said, if there ain't no God, what the heck we doing here? That's a good thought, brother. That's deep. That's some deep theology, man. There ain't no God. What are we even doing here? Uh, we wouldn't be here if there wasn't a God. Don't worry about yesterday. Get busy for God today. Second advice for this year. Don't put off till tomorrow what you ought to do today. Now, this is for all your lazy backslid husbands. That your wife's been trying to get you to clean that mess out of that carport for six months, and you ain't still ain't had time to do it. Lord, how quiet it is in here this morning. Or that messy bathroom, or that messy car. Lord, I wouldn't want to get in some of y'all's car. I'm afraid I'd get snake bit. And and we're always going to clean it up. I'm going to get that mess straight. And I'm the same way. I'm preaching to myself. I got a mess at home right now. I got a messy carport right now. And I say, you know, I'm going to do that. 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 But isn't it funny how that we can make time for everything that we want to do and put off what we don't want to do? Can I hear an amen right there? Touch your neighbor and say hallelujah. Give a thousand. I'm just kidding. I'm just, that's the way crazy preachers talk. Uh, but uh, I want to tell you something this morning, brother. Listen, don't put off till tomorrow what you should do today. It ain't going to be a bit easier tomorrow than it is today. It won't be a bit easier to clean out that mess uh, tomorrow than it is today. Just go ahead and get on it. I, I done made up my mind. One of my New Year's resolutions. Tomorrow, I've got a mess around the house. I'm going to start cleaning up in there. I'm going to put these boys to work. Uh, amen. Uh, uh, they eat my food, sleep in my bed. Uh, they ought to help, help around the house. Now they do. I, uh, these guys, they do work, and they and they help me a lot. But you know, we need to put them to work. We need to say, I'm going to take time. We make out, we block out a time for a vacation. We block out a time for a, a ball game, a sports activity. Should nothing wrong with that. Uh, but let's block out some time and say, you know what? I'm going to get something done around here. I'm going to I'm going to get done what I need to get done. Uh, don't put off till tomorrow what you should be doing today. Number three, here's what y'all do this year. Here's your New Year's resolution. Don't make the same dumb mistakes we made last year. Right? Don't make bad investments. Going in debt, one of the worst things you can do, especially as a young couple, is get yourself in debt so much to where you're obligated, you can't do nothing because of them bills, bills hanging over your head. Now, can I? You know, I just talk plainly. Listen, I've been doing this a long time, and I've been. And I, when I was young, I thought I had to have a nice car. I thought I had to have a nice, you know, da 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 da, because everybody else had it, and I didn't want them to think I was a loser or something like that. But listen, you don't have to impress nobody. You buy what kind of car you can afford, because it don't. They don't care no way. Don't go and get you a car for your payments. Is $900 a month and your house payments $1,000 a month 
and then you got groceries and electricity and insurance and tires and then you get sick and get the flu and have to miss work and then, and then you're behind, you're behind, you're behind. In other words, if your outgo exceeds your income, your upkeep will be your downfall. Can we say that again? If you're, you, you want me to say it in plain redneck language? You can't spend more money than you make. I mean, people sit down and they say, now, now I make, now my bills are $2,500 $2, a month, every month. And I done sit down and figured it out, preacher. I make $2,600. You're going to lose it. You're going to lose it. You got to put a big window in there of unexpected stuff and stuff tearing up. Am I right, old people? You think, I can afford this, I can afford it. Yeah, but you, you, all of a sudden your water heater goes out. Then your well goes dry. Then your roof leaks. Then, you, then uh, you get sick. Then you have to have some kind of surgery. So, look, I, I live, you know, y'all, I got a nice house. I ain't complaining about my house. I love my house. But it's a double-wide mobile home with a house built on the front of it. So I... People say, well, well, you're a preacher. You've been preaching all these years. Wouldn't you like to build you a big, beautiful, nice log cabin? I'd take it, but I ain't going to go in debt for it. I ain't going to do it. I got my house paid for when I was about 50, 56 years old, something like that. And that's a long time. From, from 20 to 50, 30 years, brother. By the time you get them paid for, they're running down so much you got to keep spending money and redo it all again. But... I, I don't I don't want to have to live with debt hanging over my head. I don't want to. If I can't afford a car, I ain't going to buy it. And sometimes you have to. You have to go in debt for a car sometimes. You have to go in debt for a house sometimes. But keep it within your means because you wind up fussing and arguing and just blowing a bunch of money and you wind up that, you know, it, it just don't work like that. You know, it just don't work like that. I, I know I know that might make, make some of y'all feel uncomfortable, but I say it for help, help a lot of people if they will listen to it. Number, number four, listen to this. Here's just some advice for 2024. You treat people the way you want them to treat you. Jesus said that. Doing others is what? You would have them? Right. That's right. Be a good neighbor. Help people out. You want, People say, well, my neighbors, they are all of them stuck up. Go down there and be nice to them. Knock on the door. Say, say you might need them one of these days. Uh, be, be neighbor. My neighbors up there in Hoppy Tom, they all, uh, people live around there and everything. Uh, they all know I'm a preacher. And, uh, and sometimes there'll be a feud going on down the road sometimes. They'll call me up there, Danny, come down here and straighten this person. <laughs> they, want me, they want me to come down there and be the referee uh, when the neighbors. And I've done it. I've done it. I'll say, now look, now, you know, we've been friends a long time. We all live up here together. And let's be nice and forgive and forget and all that. You don't want to be mean at your neighbors. And I've, I've seen people uh, take, a, take a line like this, like a, like a rope or something. And rope the property line off from this corner to this corner right there. And absolutely forget, forbid their neighbor for backing over that much. That ain't no way to act. Don't be like that for heaven's sake, y'all. I mean, be a good neighbor. Treat people the way you. I see a lot of you nodding your head. You know exactly what I mean. Anybody got crazy neighbor? Well, uh, they might be sitting in here now. Don't they? You ain't had a crazy neighbor. You're going to have a crazy neighbor. I promise you. Unless you're rich and can afford a mansion on the mountain somewhere, but uh, you take treat people the way you want to be treated. Let me, let me tell you another thing. Take time to be with your family and your kids. Take time. Take time. My mom's been going to heaven now since 2011. And Lord only knows what I wouldn't give to see her one more time in this world and hug her neck. My mom stayed up and prayed for me 30 years while I was driving and preaching revival. Now, I mean, years ago, and I mean, I was gone every night, every night. I preached uh, sometimes in 35 churches a year beside my home church and was traveling back and forth, back and forth. Charlotte, Gastonia, Burnsville, Spruce Pine, uh, Roan Mountain, uh, Gastonia, uh, Hickory, Statesville, all up Mooresville, back and forth, back and forth. And I'd come up that driveway a thousand times and I'd look and I'd see her light on. And I'd pull in the carport and go in the house and look the light go out. And she said, Danny, I can't sleep as long as I know you're out there somewhere. I wait till I see your car go up the driveway. 
And I don't have that no more. I don't have my mom here no more. I don't have my daddy here no more. My daddy's favorite time of the year was Christmas. He loved Christmas. He, 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 he'd just get all excited. He'd go buy stuff, you know, and everything. And he loved it. And I think it was like four days after Christmas, daddy fell dead with a heart attack. He's out coon hunting all night long. All night. He'd come in at 5 o'clock in the morning. And mom laid down and he, he said, you go on Sunday school, I'll be there for preaching. And he never made it that day. Oh. If I could see my daddy again here in this world. Look, I'm saying that for you that still have your mamas and your daddies. Call them. Go by and hug their neck. Take your, family, take your kids. Listen, I take Frankie. I do Frankie just like I did my three do- girls growing up. And, and Molly and Ethan. Of course, Ethan's grown. And, and I take Frankie, me and him. We tell Bible stories. You know, he turned six this week. And he's, he's learning how to spell and learning how to write. And I tell him Bible story and I say, Frankie. You know, and I tell him that story about, oh, uh, Samuel. I said, Samuel was a little boy, and he's laying in the bed one night just like you are. He goes, I said, let's cover up because we don't want to get snow on us. And we cover up like that. And I said, Frankie, the Lord said, Samuel, Samuel. And he goes like this. And he's, I said, Samuel, run in there and say, Eli, did you call me? And Eli said, I didn't call you. You go back and lay down. He goes back in there. See how interested you are already in this story? Instead of giving them a game, a, 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 a tablet, and just letting them entertain themselves or say, here, watch something on TV. I'm busy. I'm going to fool you. I'm going upstairs and watch what I really want to watch. Instead of doing that, take time to put the Word of God in your children. They're going to be grown really, really quick. They're going to be grown really, really quick. Put the Word of God in them. Well, let me say this. Take that social media and shut it off once in a while. What about cutting down on this phone time? I'd hate to know how many hours some of y'all spend on your phone. And I know exactly what you're saying. Yeah, but I don't look at nothing bad. Yeah, but you waste it. You waste it on stuff that you could be doing something for God with. I'm not saying it's wrong. I got to, I'm telling them things are addictive, y'all. Them things are addictive. Some of you people need to have a phonectomy. <laughs> surgically removed out of your hands. I mean, you, I, you can't even talk to nobody nowadays. It's like, you. Okay, and it, it's part of you. It's a part of you. And, and if, you, if you resent me saying that, it, you're just like a drunk on alcohol. You're just like somebody on meth. You cannot stand to do that. Listen, yeah, you, if you leave your Bible at home, yeah, it don't matter. Uh, you leave that phone at home, you'll turn around and drive 10 miles. Go back and get it. You cannot do it out at one hour. Put some time in the world. Leave it. Okay, I got to hurry. How about this? Eat sensibly and trim your waistline. That's right. That's exactly right. You say, preacher! You fussed about us having a phone? Now you're going to tell us we've got to go on a diet. Well, ain't that what everybody does at the beginning of the year? That's what we're all supposed to do tomorrow, right? Now, I'm, I ain't fussing. I ain't fussing. I'm not a doctor. Uh, but uh, ever since I got old a few weeks ago, I've had a lot of people, a lot of people say, Brother Danny, what what do you eat? Brother Danny, what do you don't eat? Brother, now I'm not the person that you want to ask uh, for a, a healthy diet. Because, uh, but I can, I can tell you what I know, what I believe works. Now, the Bible says bodily exercise profiteth what? Little. But you ain't got but one of these things. And if you don't take care of it, you ain't going to be able to wait around for your family or your kids or nothing. So you have got to learn to discipline a little bit of this body. That means food, diet, exercise. You, I, I think, I think it's all right to eat sugar. I do. I, I think it's all right. Some, you can overdo it. I think it's all right to have carbohydrates. I think it's all right to have some but as long as it's not in excess. But uh, the truth is, these kids nowadays don't even know what an apple and an orange or a banana is. Here, you want an orange? Shoo. Oh, gummy bears. Now, look. Look, you can tell by looking at gummy bears, that ain't really good. Uh, good for you. I don't like them, but, but I, I do. I eat an apple and a banana 
every day. And if you'll eat, eat it about 30 minutes before you have your dinner, you won't pig out as bad. I think it's a big mistake to eat to your full every day. Because your stomach's like a balloon, and if you fill it up, it goes down. And the next day, it takes a little bit more to fill it up. And then the next day, <laughs> this man right here needs to come to the altar right back there. He's standing right there. And, and Look, I, you say, you're just saying that because you're little and skinny. Look, I got the same problem you got. I love food. Son, I could eat a bowl of ice cream that big with pepsi on it every single night, seven nights a week. I could. I love it. I have My favorite food in the world is tender ribeye steak and ice cream. Ain't nothing tastes no better than that. But you, you, I mean, common sense tells you you can't eat a half a gallon of ice cream every night and pile him and, and expect not to pay some kind of price for it. I, I think you ought to get you some uh, apple cider vinegar with mother, whatever in the world that is. But the mother's in there somehow or another. And it don't taste too good. And you pour out about that much of it in a glass and drink it every day. Every day. You'd be surprised what that stuff could. It'll cure anything or stop it. Now, it, it ain't, don't, it don't taste too good, but it will cure bad breath. If you, if you go eat a bunch of garlic at the Italian restaurant and you gargle with vinegar, it'll, of course, the vinegar smells worse than the garlic. But it will kill, cure that. That's just one of the benefits. It's got all kinds in your veins, in your blood, in your heart, and pumping and everything. It's got all kinds of in it. Apple cider vinegar. You can get it at Ollie's. Uh, or you can get it at Walmart or anywhere. With the mother. Rule king. Got it. Eat every day. Every day. Every day. Glucosamine. Fish oil. All stuff. We don't get to. Look, you, can, you know, people, these kids nowadays, they, they're made out of chicken nuggets. You can't live on chicken nuggets. Chicken nuggets and pizza. I think that's why all these little 12-year-old girls are having so many babies at 11 years old. Whatever's in them chicken nuggets is getting in them and making them grown too soon. No charge for that. Dr. Castle just threw that in there. It's true. It's true. Have you noticed kids are younger and younger and younger get little girls getting pregnant? Because they feed all, they shoot that chicken and that stuff, then you eat the chicken. Next thing you know, it's you. That can't be good for you. Nothing wrong with chicken nuggets. We give Frankie chicken nuggets, but I gave him a, a spoonful of honey this morning. Honey, spoonful. Every day, every day, milk, meat. People say, well, I'm a vegetarian pe uh, preacher. Well, you, that's a doctrine of a demon is what that is. That's a demonic doctrine. It's what the Bible says. The Bible says they'll give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of the devil, commanding to abstain from meats. And forbidden to marry. That's a demonic doctrine. Fish good for you. Chicken good for you. Possum. The other white meat. And uh, uh, I don't eat possum. I know people do. Uh, I don't eat raccoon. I know people have. I would have had to. Uh, but listen, y'all. It, 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 what's good for you? Change your diet. Cut back on the sugar. Cut back on some of the carbs. And fast regularly. Fasting is good for you. Because what fasting done, it, it's, it's like putting the reset button in. You start all over again. Good for you. Good for you. I'm not a doctor. I'm just telling you. you. You cannot eat every day and stay healthy. You can't do it. Because it, where's it go? Look here. I'm going to exercise now. We're also going to start exercising tomorrow. I know you're saying, Brother Danny, I don't have time to go to the gym. That's right. I don't either. But you, you can put some preaching on your phone. Watch. I don't have to buy a gym membership or nothing. I got a chair in my house. There's four. There's five. You say, well, I can't do that my shoulder. Do it like this. I got them little weights. And every time I go somewhere, I go down the road driving like this. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You got to. It just don't work. Most of you. Not physically. If you ain't got a job where you're physically lifting up logs and lifting stuff, and everything, you're going to turn into flab, dude. I mean, it, I'm trying to help you this morning. You really are. You're going to have just a bunch of gut hanging on you, carrying it around everywhere you go. You got to do this. Do it 50. Do this one 50. Do this one 50. Do this one 50. 
Go to TJ Maxx, buy you one of them little springy thing like that, squeeze it. And my goal when I go to Florida, do a thousand of them. Time I get to Florida, I'm in ten hours, a hundred an hour. Anybody can do that. You say, Brother Danny, I got arthritis. Okay. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna wiggle my toes. Where's he at today? He I, I could have used him as an illustration. I gotta wiggle my toes for five minutes. You do this for five minutes, that's better than nothing. People might think you're something wrong with you. <laughs> Sitting around doing that like that. Uh, but do that. <laughs> Don't put that on the air, please. Um, he's, like, he's finally flipped. He got up there smoking meth, you know, the Sunday morning. But look, y'all, I'm 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 not trying to be I'm not trying to be ugly. I'm just saying. If you don't move, look, if you go out in the yard and you pick up something and then the next day you say, whew, I'm, I'm sore, man. There's something wrong there somewhere. You shouldn't get sore just for picking up your Bible. You better learn how to move all them other. And I, I know they say swimming is the best thing to move all your mother. I don't know. I don't like, I don't care about swimming. But that's what they say. You've got to learn. you got to do, oh, hell, hell. You got to do like this. you got to do like this. And if you can't, just do as far as you can. Wiggle your toe. Do, do. This ain't a real push-up, but it's better than nothing. Like this. Do 10. Within a week, I can do 12. In another week, I can do 14. See, if you don't make your body do stuff it don't want to do, you'll turn to flab. And that's where diseases and stuff come from. Well, how's that for a New Year's resolution? I got about 15 more. Y'all got time to do this? Promise you, you'll be down here by 2 o'clock. I'm, I'm just kidding. I'll come back and do the rest of them tonight. You make up your mind. I'm going to do better this year. I know we're in America. We're spoiled rotten. We don't know what inconvenience is. It's going to be between 68 and 72 degrees year round or we'll die. But I'm telling you, if we don't push ourselves toward God, I'm, I'm going to talk about faithful church. I'm going to talk about giving. I'm going to talk about soul winning. I'm going to talk about everything. But I don't know about you. Come on, Miss Desi, let's play something this morning. Let's make up our mind this morning. You know what? And I'm, I'm just partly kidding about all this health stuff. That profit is little. It really does. Bodily exercise profits a little. If you're here this morning, you might say, Preacher, I need to make a good new start this year. And I know, I probably won't make it all year. But I'm going to make up my mind. I'm going to read the Bible. I'm going to read that Bible all the way through. By the grace of God, I, I'm going to be faithful to church. I didn't have to miss a church service this year. Not one Wednesday night, not one Sunday night, not one revival night, not one camp meeting night. I give God the glory for that. I now, if, you, if you're too sick to come, you, you're too sick. I mean, you can't help it. But if you just, you don't choose to lay out a church, just to stay home and watch a ball game or something. Be faithful to church. She's playing softly, let's stand. She's playing softly, we're standing with her head bowed, eyes closed. Maybe you're here next morning, you just want to meet me around the altar and let's just get up here and let's pray. Say, hey, you know what? I'm going to get down to business this year. I'm, I'm going to quit fooling around. Hey, man, come on. Come on, let's just get down here and pray this morning. Amen. Amen. Come on. Let's just get down here and say, you know what? I'm going to get down to business this year, and I'm going to do better. That's right. Others, others. Ain't nothing wrong with just getting in the altar and saying, Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to do better. I'm going to get in that book. I'm going to do better physically, mentally, spiritually, every way there is. That's right. Others, others. Come on. Come on. Amen. Amen. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. If you need to come this morning, Get some help. I know this is a different kind of a sermon. I just talked to you a little bit. You let God help you this morning. You let the Lord help you if you want Him to. If you'll let Him, He'll help you. Heavenly Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name that You'd help all of us as we face 2024. Dear God, dear Lord, help us. Lord, our life, our body, our mind is in Your hand, Lord. It's in your hands. Dear Lord, please help us to discipline ourselves and bring this body under subjection and not just let it have its way. Lord, in anything, sin or laziness, God, help us to get up in the morning and 
and get the work done you've given us to do, get in the Word of God every day, and raise our family right, redeem the time in 2024. Dear Lord, I pray that you'd have mercy upon us. Thank you for what you've done for us this past year. We give you the glory to every bit of it. Have you in our hearts. Do what ought to be done in every life. God will thank you and praise you for it. Amen. Some still praying this morning. Some still praying. You need to make some kind of make some kind of commitment. Say, preacher, I'm gonna read the Bible. Good. Start tomorrow morning. Start tomorrow morning. Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Start right there. Go all the way through. When you hit a snag, keep reading. When you see something you can't understand, read it anyway. Read it anyway. Every word of God shall man live. Amen. Amen. All right. God bless you. All right. All right. Some still pray. All right, y'all. Thank you for being here this morning. We wound up with a really, really a good crowd, considering we got tons of people gone and on vacation or, or sick. So you be back tonight, six o'clock. Uh, we're going to continue this thought a little bit. Get us ready for 2024. Uh, so don't miss the services. I ain't coming. I ain't coming back. Get my face knocked in again. No. Uh, that's what preaching's for. Preaching is to push you. It ain't always just to entertain you or make you feel good. It ain't. I mean, sometimes it is. But sometimes you can need to just push. That's what I'm trying to do is push you. All right. We'll bow our head and we'll pray. Everybody fellowship before you go. Be sure and get around and fellowship a little bit. Take your time getting out. Uh, and God will bless you for it. All righty? Amen. All righty. Everybody just bow your head. Close your eyes. And we're going to be dismissed. Spencer, dismissed.